on this week's podcast, I'm going to do my best to explain a little bit about the ICRT and the ICRT classes. Before we begin, though, I have a fun announcement to make. In addition to the full lineup of classes that we have going on in January, and also the RMA classes and Animal Reiki that I'll be teaching in Australia, in March. I'd like to let you know that this weekend, Saturday, December 10th, we're going to be holding an open house at the farm. So for those of you who are close by, we hope we'll join you. And this is as a result of the fact that my daughter has joined me in a partnership in my essential oil business. The essential oil business is just something that I haven't been able to give very much attention to lately. I've been really focused on my the passion that I have of Reiki. And so my daughter is stepping in. She's helping me a bit with updating my website and some copywriting through her copywriting company and my social media. And she's also decided to, or agreed to take a partnership in my essential oil business. So to celebrate that, for those of you who can't make it to our open house, we are going to have free shipping for the entire month of December. And I'll, I would like to invite you to go ahead and order some of our oils. We'll be coming out in our newsletter soon with a little video so I can show you how I create the oils. I douse them and it's very much done with a lot of Reiki and in consultation with Source. An interesting story of how we got into the essential oils. So stay tuned for that. That'll be coming up in a subsequent episode. And maybe we'll even talk to you about a full episode on the essential oils, how we blend them and how we put Reiki in them. That might be something that you'd like to add to your business as well. And even how we use Reiki to assist in the business. So for the month of December, there is a link to the pamphlet and the order form in this podcast. Anywhere in North America, we will do free shipping. I'm sorry, it's really difficult for us to ship outside of North America. Also, Kathleen is starting an Etsy store. We will have a store very soon on our website, and I'll let you know about that. Perhaps when we get that live, we can do that podcast together. And then for those of you who live in the Fredericton area, we're really excited about our open house. It will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday. During the open house, I'll be doing a talk at one o'clock about the essential oils and how I create them and answering any of your questions about them. We're also going to have it tax-free for those who decide to join us. And anyone who does order our essential oils that first week of December, we will do tax-free as well, since not all of you can get to the open house. And at 1.30, I'm going to be going outside with the horses and I'll be doing a little talk about how we do things differently with the horses done differently. That is the title of my next new book. And at 2 p.m., for those who wish to stick around, I will be doing Reiki Share and it will be our first in-person Reiki Share since covid began. So I'm really looking forward to having you join us. Dress warmly. We'll be outside with the horses for the Reiki share, but we will have some nice hot chocolate and teas and kombucha for those who join us for the open house. So if you can join us Saturday, December 10th, please do. Um, And so as far as the ICRT Reiki classes, I thought I know that there can be some confusion about the classes, so I thought I'd do my best to to solve that. I know myself, I was confused about how the classes worked, how long you had to wait between classes, when I could take one class or another. And then there were a lot of obstacles that sometimes jumped in the way. So after we're done talking about the ICRT and the classes, I'd like to invite you to stay and we'll do a meditation to remove whatever obstacles are getting in the way of your Reiki journey. So I wanted to start just by explaining what the ICRT is. ICRT stands for the International Center for Reiki Training. It was created by William Lee Rand. And the reason in the 1990s, and the reason that he created it was to establish and maintain standards for teaching Reiki, to train teachers and practitioners, to create great manuals that we could use in 
Reiki classes and to encourage us to create Reiki support groups like things like this podcast and our monthly Reiki share where people can give and receive Reiki sessions. He also created it to help people develop and use their Reiki skills and to encourage students to become successful teachers if they were guided to, to continue researching new information about Reiki, to develop new techniques and improve its use. And our sister organization, the Center for Reiki Research, and you can check them out at centerforreikiresearch.org, is another organization that William started to really work toward um, evaluating and establishing and amalgamating the science behind Reiki. He also created the ICRT to acknowledge the value provided by all Reiki people, regardless of their lineage or affiliation. And you'll notice in a lot of our classes, we don't ask you to go back and begin again. If you have Reiki 1 and 2 from any lineage, you're able to move on and do our masters or our animal Reiki. And that's just an appreciation of all lineages of Reiki. And also, he wanted to promote friendly cooperation among all Reiki practitioners and teachers toward the final goal or the ultimate goal of healing ourselves and the planet through the use of Reiki. So that's why the ICRT was established. But I'd also like to share with you a little bit of the philosophy behind the ICRT. The ICRT is the largest Reiki organization in the world with over 90,000 members. And some of the philosophies that the ICRT follows is why the ICRT is that and the thoroughness of the teachings is why this lineage always really spoke to me. But some of the things that we are encouraged to do or the philosophy behind the center when we are ICRT Reiki practitioners, masters and teachers is to have honesty and clarity in our thinking and communication, a willingness to recognize prejudice in ourselves and replace it with truth and love and compassion for people who've decided not to do that. It's also about speaking the truth without any judgment or blame, respecting other people's rights to form their own values and beliefs, and so not foisting our values and beliefs on others, putting a greater value on learning from experience and on our inner guidance than on the teachings of an outside authority, basing the value of a theory or technique on our verifiable results being open to results, not attached to them, taking personal responsibility for our situation in life. And that's based around the understanding that our outer world always resembles our inner world. So if there are things in your life that you don't like, it's probably because there are things inside of you that need some love and need to be healed. If there are things in your life that you love, you created that too. So it's important for us to take responsibility for both the good and the bad that exists in our lives. And sometimes one is harder than the other. Sometimes it's hard to take responsibility for the bad. It's easier to blame someone else. Sometimes it's hard to take responsibility for the wonderful things that happen in our lives and realize that we created that. Another one of our philosophies is assuming that we always have the, res the resources to resolve any problem that we encounter or the ability to develop those resources, using all of our negative and positive experiences to heal and grow, trusting completely in the higher power regardless of the name that we use for it. And you all know if you've been listening for a while, I often use God, but if you have another name that you prefer, I invite you to always substitute that name for the one that I'm comfortable with. It doesn't matter. We're all talking about the same thing. And finally, the ICRT Center Philosophy is about the complete expression of love as the highest goal. So you can probably see why I've always been drawn to the ICRT and whatever your lineage, it really doesn't matter. I'm glad that we're here together today. 
but I am going to just explain a little bit more about the ICRT. So the first thing I want to talk about is our level one and two class. The ICRT level one and two class is actually the full title is the Yusui Holy Fire three Reiki level one and two class. And the reason that we have Holy Fire in the name of the level one and two class is that when Holy Fire came in to become an addition to Yusui Reiki, it began making our classes a little bit more powerful and it began bringing some of the attributes of Holy Fire and blending those together with the wonderful attributes of our Yusui Reiki. And so it didn't take anything away from the class, but it did add quite a bit to the class. Some of the things with holy fire is just the, there's a unification consciousness. There's an unusual amount of confidence. There's a lot of really positive things that come to us through holy fire. The holy fire also works on our behalf, even when we're not doing Reiki, like all of the time. And so some of these attributes have come into even our level one and two class, even though you don't have holy fire at the completion of the level one and two class, the holy fire is very present in the class. It conducts the placement style of attunement that we do. And so everybody begins to experience some of the benefits of holy fire, even in that very first level one and two class. Now, one of the things about Reiki classes, a couple of things about them. First of all, you will always find the right teacher for you. And I love teaching. I'm so passionate about it that I did the extra thousand hours of training to become a licensed teacher with the ICRT. And that's what that means. LRMT means that we are a licensed Reiki master teacher. We are the people that just felt called to do that extra training to become really proficient teachers and to be certain that we are teaching according to the ICRT principles and philosophies. And uh, there's only, uh, there's less than 40 of us in the world. And uh, right now that's, that is expanding, but it's not a large number because it is a very serious commitment. The, but you don't need to be a licensed Reiki master teacher in order to teach. You can actually teach after you study a master class. And that's in most lineages, certainly in ours, you can begin teaching right away. And we train you how to and so on. But one of the really neat things about our classes is that every class is very healing. Every time that you spend that much time in the energy, you get a really intensive healing. One of the things that I really like to do is I encourage my students to review their classes with me. In other words, if they've already taken a class from me and they want to review it at a later date, they come to the class from a slightly different place. And so they get a lot more out of it the second time. So I offer a reduced fee if they're reviewing a class that they've already taken from me. Now, I also have people that review classes who've maybe studied with another teacher. And one of the reasons that they do that is that at one point, some people like to take the more serious step of becoming a professional member of the Reiki Membership Association. Now, the Reiki Membership Association at this point is just in place for people at the master level. But a lot of people have studied their masters with a licensed teacher. They were guided to find one of the licensed teachers for the master level. And they can become affiliate members of the Reiki Membership Association. But if they want to become a professional member, which just gives them a few more advantages, then they need to have studied both levels with a licensed Reiki master teacher. So in that event, people sometimes come back and review classes with me. And of course, they do need to pay full price in that case. But I do have a lot of people review classes and it's very beneficial. Your vibration always rises when you review a class and you don't need to review a class with someone else. You can review a class with the same teacher that you've already studied with. 
And because you're in a different place, when you take the class, you, you always, your vibration always rises and you always get more out of it. So I really encourage people to do that. But say you're someone that's thinking of taking the level one and two class for the first time. And sometimes people think, oh, people sometimes get hung up on the price tag. One of the things that I like to encourage people is to go ahead and make up your mind because the universe always has your back. And so if you really feel that you want to take a Reiki class, go ahead and set your intention and the time, the money and the teacher always line up and show up. And in fact, if that isn't happening, there might be a teacher that you're trying to work with. I've even had people trying to work with me and they say, yeah, but your schedule just isn't lining up for me. And I let them, maybe I'm not supposed to be your teacher. Maybe you're supposed to study with someone else. And inevitably they look into it and they find just the exact right teacher for them. Maybe they come back and still study with me. But, but that's what happens. It all lines up. And so go ahead and make up your mind and you'll be amazed at how the universe supports you. When I received guidance to do my Reiki masters with William Rand in England, I didn't have the money to do it. And the money just magically lined up for me. Go ahead and just make the decision and let the universe support you, whatever that is. Reiki is one of the best investments that I have ever made. Um, not only has it given me an opportunity to heal myself and heal some debilitating allergy and health issues that I had that the medical establishment couldn't get on top of, but it also gives you an opportunity to assist others and to never feel helpless in your life. There's always something you can do when you have Reiki. So I feel like it's a superpower. And the most important step is the very first class. So with level one and two, whether you're reviewing the class or taking it for the first time, you will receive an incredible amount of healing in that class. Licensed teachers generally teach the class together, level one and two in over two full days. And that's the way Dr. Hayashi used to teach them. He did teach them back to back. He did teach them over a week. So five days of just working mornings. But in today's world, most people's schedules don't allow that. So we do our best to put the classes together over two very full, very powerful days. And we notice that when we do that, not only are the students more confident at the end of those two days, but another really interesting thing happens. Most of my students are empaths. And as empaths, they take on emotional burdens from others. And so I really find they need the mental emotional symbol that you get in day two of class and that it can be really difficult for an empath. If you're a level one Reiki practitioner and yet you feel, gosh, I'm not doing as well as I should be with Reiki, it's probably because you're an empath and you really need that mental emotional symbol to release the burden that you're carrying on behalf of others in order to really fully realize the power of Reiki. So I really enjoy teaching the class together like that. But the first class is the most important step. And one of the things that some people ask is, yeah, I know other people can do Reiki, but I'm not intuitive. Can I do Reiki? The answer is everybody can do Reiki. You don't have to be psychic or in touch with your intuition. You can be, but you don't need to be. Everybody can do Reiki and practice Reiki. And when we do, it dramatically improves our lives. We all seem, we all find that there's life before Reiki and life after Reiki and that they don't really look the same. So I encourage you, if you're thinking about taking that step, or if you're thinking about even reviewing a level one and two Reiki class, go ahead and do it. It's a, I've done my level one and two class four times. And each time I learned something new and I'm not finished. I will be reviewing the class some more. And it does give you the ability to channel Reiki yourself, which is really important. So 
One of the things, though, that we ask is that a student waits at least six months after a level one and two class before they study at the master level. And some people wonder about that. There are lineages and schools that actually teach level one, two, and three all together. I've actually had some of those students come into my classes and they let me know that they really didn't have a full appreciation of Reiki. They really didn't feel that they understood it very well. And one of the things that we find important is that you learn, you get to know the energy, you work with it for at least six months. And once you've done that, you usually know the energy well enough to move on to the master level. Now, some people are very intimidated to move on to the master level. They feel that it means they're going to have to teach. And that's not necessarily the case. If some people do their master level just for themselves and don't ever intend to teach, to be perfectly honest, I never intended to teach. And yet I now teaching is my greatest joy. So I do tell people that even though they feel they might not want to teach, they may still change their mind, but they may not. And it's perfectly all and logical to do your master level with no intention of teaching because of the additional healing and techniques and tools that it will bring to you. And so if that's you, if you're getting a nudge, if you're feeling like going ahead and doing the master level, I encourage you to do it. One of the things people will ask is, am I ready? And some people get the idea or impression that you have to be perfect in order to be ready to do your master's. And if we had to be perfect to be a Reiki master, there wouldn't be very many. Certainly, I wouldn't be a Reiki master if I needed to be perfect first. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to have spent some time with the Reiki energy and your symbols and just begin using it in your life. And if you've done that, then it's perfectly fine to move on to the master level if you feel guided. I know one of the reasons that I was really nudged to do my master level was because there were a number of horses that I sent Reiki to on a regular basis in my Reiki grid. And if I ever got busy and couldn't send Reiki to them, their people, their caregivers, their owners noticed and would message me and say, did you not send Reiki on Wednesday? My horse was having trouble again. And I thought that's a big responsibility. There are going to be days when I don't have a chance to send it to them. So I wanted those horses to have an attunement so that they didn't have to wait for me to send Reiki to them. They had the ability to channel it themselves. And if you feel guided, then I encourage you to go ahead. Now, one of the obstacles that shows up once we decide, okay, I don't have to be perfect. I think I'm ready to go ahead with my Reiki masters. Another obstacle that sometimes pops up for people is the price tag. And um, in ICRT, our classes are we all charge the same. And so for an ICRT level one and two class, it is $495. And in that you get William Rand's very complete manual, either an electronic copy or an, a paper version. You also get a subscription to a one-year subscription to the Reiki News Magazine, which is a, if you don't already get the Reiki News Magazine, please sign up for it. It's only $16 a year for a perpetual subscription. It's $20 if you just take one year at a time. And it's got fantastic information. I always try to write articles in the Reiki News Magazine where I can and whenever the article is accepted for publication because it's just the information is fantastic in those magazines. And for the master level, licensed teachers charge $1,295. And those are US and US dollars. And so some people wonder why my classes are in US dollars. And the reason is that it would just be too difficult to keep changing, even though I'm in Canada, it would be too difficult to keep changing it back and forth according to the according to the exchange rate. So as licensed teachers, we are all required to charge the same. So that's what I do. That may seem like quite a lot. And when I look back 
it's been one of the best investments in my life. And I know that I originally intended to study Reiki in order to assist those horses. I never intended to teach. But when I, the class was so deeply healing for me, it healed so much that I realized how much I did love people and how much I did want to teach people. And interestingly, I was having financial difficulties before doing my Reiki master class. And the Reiki masters just completely sorted that out for me. It also sorted out my career. And I've watched that happen for so many people who are at a crossroads or they're not so sure what to do with their life. Maybe what they're doing isn't fulfilling or maybe they're burnt out. Maybe it's not fulfilling any longer. They want to make a change. They want to make a difference. And the Reiki master level really seems to propel us within our career. It doesn't always make mean that we change our career, but it sometimes means that we proceed differently. It often does. And if we're struggling to find where we fit, the master class really, it accelerates bringing us into alignment with our life purpose. And so if you've been given that any thought, I encourage you to go ahead. I know that immediately I intended to teach. I decided to teach when I got back and it wasn't for financial reward. It was simply because from working with William Rand, my lineage became so closely aligned with Reiki's founder, Yusui Sensei. I thought, how could I not share that with people? And I was also murdered with the teaching of the ICRT and the thoroughness of it and the sort of the fact that there weren't a lot of rules, it was very, it was very enveloping, very encouraging. And I really liked, for me personally, I really liked the nature of that. I didn't like to be told you must do things a certain way. I loved how accepting, how non-judgmental my teachers in the ICRT were and and just how kind and also how professional. And so I thought, how can I not pass that on? And so I immediately decided to start teaching Reiki. And with that, oddly or surprisingly, one of the surprising things is that my financial issues all worked themselves out. So that was really a lovely, surprising result. And also my career issues. I was doing business consulting and horseback riding and the business consulting had just, I stopped loving it. And it had stopped paying the bills. It used to pay the bills. It had stopped paying the bills because I think my heart wasn't in it anymore. And as a result, it was so interesting. The, the, the business dried up and I just decided I don't want to do that anymore. And I started doing instead what I loved. And so the Reiki master can really walk you through that step. Now, originally, when the Reiki master class was taught by Mrs. Takata, the cost for a master class was $10,000. And this is in the 1970s. If we adjusted that for inflation, that would be $78,000 today. And sometimes people ask the question is the master class worth $10,000? And the answer, I just think about that. And one of my friends, Carolyn Musial, said she had to think about that. And she thought, yes, it is. It's worth $10,000 easily, even if I never taught just for what it has done in my life. And on top of that, she said, it's actually worth $78,000 too. And I thought about it and thought, yes, it is worth that. Now, fortunately with the ICRT, their guidance is to have a, a lower priced course that is more affordable. It's 1295 US and it includes the manual and the magazine U. And, and if you do both your level one and two and your master class with a licensed teacher, with any of our licensed teachers, you do qualify for professional membership in the ICRT Reiki Membership Association if you would like to, or if you choose that. And that's just, that's, you don't need to join the membership, but many people do enjoy joining the membership. They can advertise their classes on the website that way and so on. 
And, and one of the things that I know I've done and a lot of my colleagues have done as well, I tend not to discount classes. And the reason is that I've noticed over the years that when I do that, I, the person that receives a discount doesn't get quite as much out of the class. And I've started to realize it's because they didn't, they don't think they're worth the full price of the class and everybody is worth the full price of the class. I had somebody from a country who, um, and this country, the value of the dollar was so much lower and there just wasn't a lot of money in this country. And she really wanted to take one of my classes. And I said, let's just do payments. And all she could afford was $86 a month. And I said, that's just fine. So she made her payments $86 a month until the class was paid off and I was able to send her a certificate. She was so pleased. I was so pleased. So just know that you're worth whatever class you decide to take. If you decide to study in Mrs. Takata's lineage, where it is $10,000 at the master level, if you decide to study in our lineage, where it's $12.95 US, you're worth this. It's And when you make a decision, the funds seem to show up. So please keep that in mind. But I have, I know I've broken things down to take payments for people who find that difficult. And that makes it a little easier. We actually can do four installments, monthly installments. And that's just an automatic button that it doesn't exist yet on my website. But by the time you hear this, hopefully it will, or it will just be a few days out. So if that's something that you want to do, go ahead and sign up that way. The masterclass really makes a big difference. And in our masterclass, in addition to learning Yusui Reiki, you also learn Holy Fire. And Holy Fire brings a host of additions and changes. It helps heal the ego. It helps connect us with our life purpose. It heals the dormant self and the recreated self so that we become our authentic self. It brings a tremendous amount of physical, mental, and emotional healing. And so the Holy Fire doesn't take anything away from the Yasui class, but it does add to it. And it also allows us to do a different style of attunement if we choose to teach either people or animals or loved ones or whomever. And the style of attunement is a hands-off style of attunement called a placement for Yasui Reiki and an ignition at the Holy Fire Master level. And those styles of attunement are both very powerful, but they're also simple to do. So we really love what the Holy Fire Reiki energy has done to our master class. So after the master class, once you're a Reiki master for at least six months, we have an advanced Reiki master class called Karuna Reiki. Karuna Reiki has a really interesting story. It came together in 1993. After William Rand began teaching, students began bringing him various symbols and that other teachers had channeled and so on. And the symbols were a lot alike. And so William asked the energy after he didn't know what to do with them. He just put them in a folder. And at one point he asked the energy what to do with them. And he received very clear guidance that they were to create a new system of Reiki. And so William created this new system of Reiki in 1993 by getting together some of his more clairvoyant students, and they worked with all of the symbols that he had gathered from his times teaching. And <clears throat> They chose eight of them, or I guess it was nine at the time, that were the most effective, most consistently effective, and the most powerful. And so Karuna Reiki, again, it isn't better than Yusui Reiki, but it takes things to a whole other level. And we all have noticed this. I remember myself before studying Karuna Reiki thinking, why would I need another class? I'm already a Reiki master. And I also remember specifically thinking that life doesn't get any better than this. My life had improved so dramatically after studying my master course. My 
um, career path smoothed out, my finances smoothed out, my life smoothed out, my personal life, my relationships, everything just fell into place in such a beautiful way that I couldn't imagine life getting any better than it already was. And yet I studied Karuna Reiki and it did get better. It got more effortless, more opportunities came through and I seemed to have the energy and the aptitude to, to pursue them. So Karuna Reiki is a really fantastic system of Reiki and it complements Yasui and the Holy Fire Reiki and Karuna Reiki is also taught with holy fire. So for instance, and you don't need to have gone up through with the ICRT, you can do Karuna Reiki. If you are a master from any lineage, you can do Karuna Reiki. And one of the things that does is it automatically brings you holy fire. And so from that point on, all of the classes that you teach can be taught as ICRT classes and with holy fire, which simplifies and strengthens the, the attunements. The, it's a placement style of attunement that we use for Yusui. We use an ignition style of attunement, as I mentioned, for holy fire. And Karuna Reiki, what I do find is a lot of people who do study Karuna Reiki with that intention, some people go off to teach holy fire, but some people are so enamored with the holy fire energy and with the ICRT way of teaching that a lot of those folks come back and study the masters or the level one and two or both. And a lot of folks, when they get to the level of Karuna, it really is an advanced level. It really does take your life in a whole new, beautiful, effortless, wonderful direction. And it really complements what we're able to do as we work healing with others. So some people also take Karuna Reiki, not with any intention to teach, and you don't have to teach at any of these levels if you don't want to. You can. You can teach as soon as you've finished the class, but you don't have to. And so some people take these classes not with an intention to teach, but instead um for themselves. And then yet others take these classes because they want to help with their healing. And with Karuna Reiki, we really get such significant additional healing, and it so complements the Yusui Reiki. One of the things that I noticed on the healing table after I studied Karuna Reiki is that some of the issues for some of my clients, like deep-seated, really difficult issues like childhood abuse and things like that, karma, phobias, things that we really struggled to heal with the Yasui Reiki system suddenly began healing. And so much Laurel Gaia, one of our licensed teachers who's passed on now, she wrote a wonderful book about Karuna Reiki. If you're ever interested to purchase it, you can get it through the ICRT. And I believe it's also available at other booksellers as well. And one of the things she noticed is that even very old scar tissue began to heal for her after she had Karuna Reiki. It began to bruise and then heal. And so Karuna Reiki just really amplifies everything, the power of everything that you're doing. It brings some new techniques and some things that we use with it. I remember my husband deciding to take Karuna Reiki a few years ago, just at the beginning of the pandemic. And he questioned me. He said, wait, I'm already a Reiki master. Why would I take Karuna? And I said, you don't have to, but some people are guided to take Karuna. And he just, and I was teaching it. It was my last class that I was teaching before I was licensed at every level with the ICRT. And I'll talk a little bit about the licensing program too. But, um, and so it was at the beginning of the pandemic, it was my first online class, but he decided to attend in person since we were quarantining together in the house, of course, or, or isolating together. And he he loves Karuna now. He chants and tones the symbols every day. He loves the symbols. He says he uses it more than Yusui, and it just really resonated with him. 
And, uh, and he's, he's, and most people say once they get in class, oh, that's why I was called to do this class because it does heal us so deeply, but it also brings us to such a high vibration that it's just a wonderful class. It's one of my favorite classes to teach. It's very effortless to teach as well. And so I'm so grateful to William for creating that in 1993. And I'm grateful to the license, the, no, they're not licensed teachers, but I'm grateful to the people who originally channeled the symbol. And that includes Marcy Miller, Kelly Ray Marine, Pat Courtney, Catherine Mills Bellamont, and Marla Abraham. And when that group was together, they also experimented with an attunement process to go with them. And then, of course, when Holy Fire showed up 23, 21 years later, on January 23rd of 2014, it Holy Fire became a part of the Karuna system. So that's why when somebody studies Karuna, even if they've come from another lineage, they have holy fire. All of the classes can be taught in our style afterwards. So it's, it can be a really neat place to go if you're a Reiki master who's been a master for at least six months and you're coming from another lineage. It can be a really interesting way to, to step into this. Although some people do find it a bit overwhelming just because the Karuna is a big step and the holy fire is a big step. So it's two big steps together when you haven't come up through the holy fire, just the same. It is, it's a big shift, a very big shift for people who approach it that way, but it also works really beautifully. So if you're considering studying Karuna Reiki from any Karuna Reiki master teacher, it's a three-day master class, the same as the others, and really wonderful, powerful addition to your toolbox. And Karuna is actually a Sanskrit word, but it's also used in Hinduism, Buddhism, and Zen. And it translates to mean any action that is taken to diminish the suffering of others. And that can also be translated as com compassionate action. So we often think of Karuna Reiki as the energy of compassionate action. It's a, a really wonderful energy. And it's also very much, I think, part of that path to enlightenment. And so we're really grateful that Karuna Reiki, for all of us who have it, we're grateful it came into our lives. It made such a huge impact. And then, of course, it wasn't until many years later in 2014, 21 years later, when William wasn't looking for anything that the Holy Fire Reiki arrived. And Holy Fire has so many wonderful attributes that I'm not sure that I can really um, completely cover them here, but I'll say a few things about it. It's noticeably more refined, so it does bring everything to a higher level again. It comes from a higher level of consciousness. It works continuously, even if we're not thinking about it, and it spontaneously heals issues as they come up. It always respects people's free will. It will never work with anyone who doesn't wish to work with it or against their free will. It heals very deeply and quickly without distress. It heals relationships and interactions with others. It releases worry and it replaces it with a sense of safety in a most pronounced way. And it also really assists us in understanding and following our divine guidance. I always say that Reiki always provides divine guidance, but once Holy Fire gets into the mix, it's like instead of just showing us the path, the Holy Fire Reiki goes ahead of us and clears the path, and then it worries we might trip, so it paves the path, and it just makes it very effortless for us to follow the our life path and purpose, and it just releases any obstacles that might get in our way. It gives us the skills and the abilities and the will to follow it because Holy Fire Reiki really, it releases a lot of bioki or negative energy, negative ki, and it frees up a lot of energy for us. And it does help us develop the personality traits that are healthy, like self-love, love of others, kindness, patience, confidence, vitality, 
enthusiasm, optimism, trust, joy, peace. And, and it also has within it a very wonderful feeling of being loved. It's very refined, nurturing. And one of the wonderful things about a holy fire is that once you receive it, it continues to develop itself to be more evolved and effective. And so when holy fire showed up, we became very aware that just as Reiki has evolved from its inception from Yusui. It, it evolved with Yusui. At first, it was the energy. Then you used to need to meditate with Yusui to get the energy. Then he prayed for a faster and easier way. He got an attunement. He came up with some ways of using the Reiki, things like Reiji Ho, Chirio, Gasho, he also came up with a method of scanning for illness, and, and then it continued to develop with Hayashi and with Mrs. Takata, Dr. Hayashi and Mrs. Takata. When the Holy Fire came in 2014, it was very clear that it was going to continue to develop, to develop, and it has continued to, we call it an upgrade. But I want to just explain that process, because it probably sounds a little bit odd, and it was really neat to wrap my head around it. The energy that is available to us increases. And that's normal because the more we develop ourselves and work on ourselves, the more we're able to do. And so these upgrades or this evolvement that happens in the energy, and it has been happening within Reiki energy from the beginning, it's not actually that the energy itself shifts, what it is, our ability to receive it increases. So as we work on ourselves with Reiki and with Holy Fire Reiki, the our ability to receive more expands. We increase our connection, we heal that needs to be healed. And so now we have an ability to receive more. And that's what happens each time this energy upgrades. We've had some significant upgrades with Holy Fire energy. We had an upgrade uh, two years later in, in um, 2016. We had an upgrade in 2018. We had a significant upgrade when the energy went online in 2020. And we had another significant upgrade this year when the world peace energy came in. That's the energy we're going to be working with today in our experience. We're going to be taking things to the highest level of what is available to us. And the world peace energy came in recently when William and Colleen Benelli were working together, they prayed and asked what to do with the Ukraine war. And they were told, oh, there is an energy that can help with that, that really helps establish inner peace in people. And of course, our outer world always resembles our inner world. As we establish the this inner peace, it can lead to outer peace. And specifically, we can also send world peace Reiki, not just to the Ukraine war, but to the 21 other wars that are occurring simultaneously on the planet today. And even to any situation, not just um, wars, but this energy is very helpful in even within our communities, even with things that are happening in our own cities, things that are happening in our own families, anywhere that there's discord, this energy is helpful. It came in response to the question and in response to the fact that we were ready to receive more. But the world peace energy has just brought so many of us to such a tremendous amount of inner peace that we all just love it. So I want to talk to you now as well about animal Reiki. And Colleen Benelli was asked way back in 2015, I believe, by William Rand to, he was very aware that the animals were ready to have a Reiki energy that was just a little bit spe more specific to them and more palatable to them and that it would help animal lovers as far as sharing Reiki with them, because most animals did enjoy 
working with the Yasui Reiki. I always worked with my animals with Reiki since 2011. My animals actually had attunements to the Reiki, which was very unusual at that time, but it's become a bit more common. They, uh, my Reiki master offered it to me and the animals, the horses loved it, uh, offered it to my horses. The horses loved it. And I spoke with William when I became a Reiki master in 2011. And he, we, the, my horses gradually worked their way up to the master level. And some of them, only about half the herd, even went to the Karuna master level. My dogs mostly enjoyed Reiki, but we would always find one or two animals out of, out of 10 or a dozen that didn't really resonate with the Yasui Reiki that we were working with, or they could only take it in very small amounts. And I had a dog that was like that. I also had one of my 12 horses that was like that. The other animals liked it, but there was always a few. And I would have some clients that were like, no, thank you to the Reiki. And so William was very aware that the animal Reiki was, it was something that was going to really benefit not just the animals, but humanity, because remember that as a human, we are also an animal. And uh, so Colleen got together with Sue Strong, and they worked almost weekly for a while, trying to listen to the energy and understand what needed to be done. And each time that they did this, they got the very frustrating message that the energy wasn't ready. Finally, in 2019, Colleen invited myself. I was a brand new licensed teacher or just starting the licensing program. And she invited me. I was being mentored by Colleen and she knew that I had a lot of animal experience. So she invited myself, Sue, her and her daughter, Robin Benelli. And the four of us just sequestered ourselves with the energy at Colleen's for four days, just listening to what the animals wanted, what the energy was able to provide, and really just listening to the energy, listening. And it was really interesting because originally we thought we were creating a system of Reiki that was, or we thought we were creating, I guess, a bunch of how-to books, like how to use the Reiki you already have with animals, which is what all four of us, we were all animal lovers. Sue is a wildlife biologist, I believe a specialist in exotic animals and has worked with exotic animals all her life. Robin and Colleen have had horses and dogs and worked with animals all their lives. And we'd all worked with Reiki for a very long time with the animals we thought we were just ex going to be explaining to people how to do that in what we were creating. And so we were probably more surprised than anyone when a whole new system of Reiki showed up with its own energy, with its own symbol. And this system of Reiki once again complemented what we already have and really added to it. A few really key and core guiding principles came through the animal Reiki. One of them was that we there can be a lot of human hating in the world. And we sometimes get very frustrated. Oh, people, we're polluting the planet. We're doing this. We're doing that. And I'm, I'm guilty of that. I used to feel that way very much. And so do a lot of animal lovers get very, we love animals, but we're, we get quite discouraged with humans. And one day in a meditation, Colleen had asked the earth, what must you think of us? And though she didn't say, I always suspected she thought the earth was going to say, you're terrible, you're polluting the waters, you're at war with each other, and, you know, this sort of thing. But that's not what she heard. Instead, what she heard was, you're beautiful. And if you could only learn to see yourself the way I see you, you would create your life from that place. But because you believe yourselves to be flawed and destructive, that is where you create your life from. Now, one of the principles of Reiki and ICRT, as I mentioned to you, is a belief or an understanding that we create our own lives and our outer world will resemble our inner world. And so 
following that philosophy, if we could just realize how beautiful we are, and the animals said the same thing, you're amazing. We just need you to realize that. But until you do, we'll, you know, the dogs in particular said, until you can realize how amazing you are, we will hold that vision for both of us. And that was just a remarkable, incredibly healing principle that came through another really incredible healing principle was the fact that we are not separate from the animal kingdom. Even if we don't believe personally that we are separate from the animal kingdom, even if we're an animal lover who can see the similarities, the culture that most of us have been raised in, not all of us, but the majority of people in the world have been raised in a culture that believes in dominion over the earth. And we were shown that was a very specific mistranslation or misunderstanding that it was meant to be in communion with the earth and all the animals and the earth and so on, not dominion over that there was an, an issue either with translation or understanding. I'm not sure. And so this belief in dominion over, even if you don't hold it personally, it has formed part of Yuli created self. So it's formed part of your life experience. And this is really significantly healed when we when we learn animal Reiki. And so another thing that is surprising about animal Reiki is that it is even for people who aren't animal lovers, it so deeply heals this sense of belonging on the earth that probably the, the most stunning part for all of us when we began teaching this class is that it so deeply heals that sense of belonging on the earth that it's it's incredibly healing for the people who take the class and I'll, sometimes I'll get somebody in class who says I don't understand why I'm here I'm not really an animal person I don't have animals but something I'm a Reiki master or a Karuna Reiki master and the energy guided me to class and then they are so deeply personally healed during the class. And then they understand that because the human is an animal, this energy, the beautiful energy of animal Reiki comes in during all of their sessions. So their human sessions are become much more efficient, much more effective than they understood why they were there. So it's really interesting. We taught the class for a while, but I will tell you that when the energy came in, it came in with stops and starts. So even though we're all kind of work hard, get it done kind of people. And even though we had people contacting us on a very regular basis, like, when can I take the class? When is it going to be ready? And the office heard that too. We had to wait until the energy was ready to reveal each new concept, each new aspect of the course. And sometimes we we just had to very frustrated. We were very frustrated and we just had to wait. But eventually we began teaching the level one and two class. And we just taught it for about a year until the master class was two years, sorry, until the master class was ready. We began teaching it in 2020, Jan December and January of 2020. No, January of 2020. And then in it wasn't until June of 2021 that we had finished the master class. It was a year and a half. And then once everything was finished and once we had tested it and seen how wonderfully it worked, we submitted the manuals and the course to the ICRT and it became ICRT Animal Reiki. We're very proud of the course. I will tell you that at the time of this podcast being recorded, the master the manuals are available but the master manual is still in its draft form the level one and two manual has been edited and completed but we were asked to begin allowing people to take the class even before the manuals were final were finally edited because people just they would pr they preferred to have manuals that weren't perfect yet and and get access to the energy the energy itself is incredible there's a real thread of abundance in it and if you think about and that's been a really profound shift in my life it's allowed us to do things that i never thought would be possible it's really expanded my business and our capabilities it's simplified things it's made them more efficient it's brought 
just a bigger sense of belonging and so on. But if you think about how most animals don't worry about where their next meal comes from because they trust in the abundance of the earth, it brings in that trust and it brings in that connection to the flow and to abundance. So I can't say enough about it. Some people wonder how are they eligible to take the course? Are there any prerequisites? And there are people that would like to jump straight to animal Reiki and not bother with human Reiki or Yasui Reiki. But it was very clear to us from the beginning that before you can take animal Reiki level one and two, a prerequisite needed to be Yasui Reiki level one and two from any lineage, but you do need to have the three Yasui level one and two symbols. So even if you had taken another level of Reiki that didn't have the three Yasui symbols, you probably would need to, another style, you probably would need to take an Yasui level one and two class prior to taking animal Reiki. And that's because the animal Reiki builds on the Yasui class and it bonds, it blends with the Yasui symbols. Now, that can be from any lineage. You don't have to take ICRT level one and two before animal Reiki. You can come to animal Reiki from any lineage. And you're probably noticing a theme here. You can come to ICRT Reiki from any lineage. And that's that was also clear in the energy that they didn't have, that the person doesn't have to have holy fire to study animal Reiki, but they do need yasui reiki from some lineage and then you can study animal reiki level one and two and it's a two-day class much like our yasui level one and two class we also have an animal reiki master class and the animal reiki master class is you don't have to wait between level one and two and master. Like for instance, if you're already a Reiki master, you can do level one and two Monday and Tuesday, and you can do the master class Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And I actually have some people who do that and it works out really well. But if but there are two prerequisites for the animal Reiki master. You need to have a an Isui Reiki master from any lineage and you do need to have the icrt animal reiki level one and two and that's because it would be really difficult to be a reiki master and begin teaching and so on if you didn't understand the level one and two principles and also the icrt animal reiki master builds on the level one and two class so i hope that has explained our ICRT classes to you. I do want to just briefly mention another class that I teach. I do teach animal communication. It is a class that I've developed myself. A lot of people find that it goes really well with the ICRT animal Reiki. And so I do have a lot of people that will join me for my animal communication class. The animal communication class at the moment is just a two-day level one and two class, but just this weekend, as I am teaching this class, I received guidance that the animal communication class, I, it, it received a, a big shift, a big upgrade, and I'm going to be making that upgrade available to the the few hundred the three or four hundred people that I've already taught this to I'm going to make that available to them the hundreds of people that already have it and it has shown that it's going to develop into a master practitioner a one day master practitioner course which will probably come in January or February and it will eventually this spring, I'm hearing June, develop into a master teaching course. So the animal communication class that I teach is something that I learned from the animals. It passes on that ability. It is powered by Reiki. It uses attunements. That's brand new this weekend that attunements came in and uh, or it's been developing and uh, invocations. And so if that's something that you're interested in, the majority of my animal communicators that take the class, the majority of them can hear the animals at the end of class. And I also teach dowsing as a way to verify what you've heard. So it's a very popular class. And I'd love to have you join us if that speaks to you. And if you'd like to have that to complement your Reiki 
or animal Reiki. So I hope you've enjoyed these reflections today. I hope this has helped you to understand your path. And I just want to take a few minutes now and have a look at releasing any obstacles that you might have to moving forward on your Reiki path. Some people have the obstacle of money. I don't have them. I want to take more courses. I don't have the money or they don't have the time or they haven't found the teacher. Sometimes it's not knowing if you're worthy or and that shows up a lot and not knowing if you're capable, whatever it is that's holding you back from taking your next step with Reiki, whatever your next step will be or is, I'd like you to have a look inside now and ask if that energy had a shape what shape would it have? All of the things that are holding me back, if they existed in my body, where would they exist and what shape would they have? What color would that shape be? Is it heavy or inconsequential? And we're going to do a little experiment now that will release that for you. And the final question is, are you willing to let go of these things that are holding you back on your journey? Maybe your journey is to begin reviewing classes with other teachers. Maybe you're interested in becoming a licensed Reiki master teacher. I'll include an article in the write-up that I wrote about that because that's a wonderful step that you can take. Maybe you'd like to become a professional member of the ICRT Reiki Membership Association by studying with licensed teachers, level one and two and masters. A lot of people that do that find that the Reiki energy really works with them in a different way. It really elevates. Whatever it is, I'd like you to consider it, to close your eyes, take a deep breath, And just place your hands on top of that block, wherever it exists in your body. And just beginning to let it go, be willing to let it go. Letting the Reiki energy release it for you. Inviting your symbols to join you, inviting the Reiki energy, if you're not sure, maybe you're not sure of your next step, just inviting the energy to show you what is the next step on your path and of your Reiki journey. And we'll remain here for a few minutes today, and I'm going to send you Animal Reiki, Karuna Reiki, Yasui Reiki, and Holy Fire. And as these energies and symbols wrap around you. They just flow into you and they surround, wrap around that block that you've identified. And then they just swirl out of you, taking the block with them. And as they do, the light of the divine earth flows up through the bottoms of your feet and the light from the heavens flows down from the highest heavens. And the Reiki energy that's all around you flows into your body on your breath. And it fills those spaces. The space that is left behind and it brings in the light of confidence. And it connects you with your path forward. And you may not see it completely now, but just understand that you are connected and that all you need to do from this point forward is to just take the next step and then the next one and the one after that. That might involve just researching and finding the teacher that you're meant to move forward with. It might include learning a bit more about a class that has piqued your interest. 
It might include simply being open and allowing the opportunities to show up for you. Whatever that next step is, just let the Reiki energy know that you're willing to take it now. And allow the energy to guide you. I invite you to stay in this space as long as you feel guided. And when you feel ready, you can return ready and willing to take your next step with Reiki and on your life path with your purpose. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me here today. I wish you the very best on your Reiki path forward, whatever that is for you. Namaste.